What's new from Apple? There's the new iPhone 16 Pro, built for Apple intelligence. And it comes with the all-new camera control, giving you an easier way to quickly access your camera tools. The new Apple Watch Series 10 has our biggest display and our thinnest design ever. And this? It's the sound of active noise cancellation, now available on one of two new AirPods 4 models. So quiet. Check out all of the new products and new features at Apple.com. You can even buy yourself something new. See Apple.com for product availability updates. Apple Intelligence coming this fall. Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. This is a production from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Previously on Robots of the Company. Up a little more, P2. Just a little more. Just a touch more. Perfect. How's it coming, Boffin? Well, Captain, we've nearly finished moving all the wreckage of the Titan One into this junkyard you ordered us to build. Only one load left to grab. It's just a garbage can. Oh, no. Oh, boy. I can feel my positronic net starting to heat up. This could be it, boys. He's lost it, I tell you. Captain Punch has finally flipped his lid. Terminally. I, I mean, placing an armed guard... On a garbage can, the captain has lost his marbles. Again. Oh, I know. I wish that a happy bot would appear right here from nowhere. Your wish is my command. Hooray! I'm saved. I can't believe you guys could even consider a mutiny against the captain. (gasps) Oh, no. Not a mutiny. I didn't sign up for that. Oh, how about you, Zipper? Hey, 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 rock on, man. And now, the exciting conclusion. You are listening to Robots of the Company, episode 502, Random Wishes, which was written by Jonathan Patrick Russell. Hello again, Punch McNottich here with a little heads up. You are about to witness a historic moment in my personal life. The moment my crew sent me packing. Well, sorta. Uh, Just listen and you'll get it. So, uh, what's all this about? Why'd you guys call me in here? I have important duties to perform. Boffin, P2 and I are trying to salvage the wreckage of the Titan I in order to build a new ship from the remains of the old one. I haven't got time for any nonsense. It is not nonsense, Mon Capitaine. No, indeed. It's a matter of the utmost importance. I really think you should hear them out, Butch. Oh, all right. Say your piece, then. That's very reasonable of you, Captain. Thank you for hearing us out. Oui, that is very sensible. Just get on with it before I stop feeling so sensible. What do you bots want? We want you to... Step down. But I'm, uh, I'm standing level with the rest of you. Merd, listen, and get it into that thick metal head of yours. We want a new leader. Yes, we want you to step down as captain. Run that by me again. They're saying that they want a democratic election. They want to elect a new captain. Well, we want to. We? Is that true? Does everyone here want me to step down as captain? Even you, Squeak? Well, not really. I mean, I agree with Sphinx and Zimtron that we should be able to hold an election to choose for ourselves. I mean, you can run against them if you want to. I'd certainly vote for you. I think you've done a wonderful job, considering what you've had to work with. Well, gee, thanks, Squeak. I, uh... Now, just hang on a minute here. Are you saying Sphinx... And Zimtron are the ones wanting to run for captain? We? You bet your shiny hiney we are. 
And that's okay with you? With all of you? Speaking for everyone, yes. It's okay with us, because then we'd at least get to choose our leader. In a democratic way. I, uh... I don't believe this. Does that mean you're going to stand in our way, Mon Capitaine? Yes. Are you going to try and stop us, Punch? Well, I... Uh... No. No way. If... If you guys want a new captain, then so be it. You know, I've given you guys the best years of my life, and the majority of you have never been satisfied with anything I've ever done for you as captain. Well, you know what? If you want me to step down as your captain, then so be it. What? I must express my disbelief as well. You're not even going to fight them on this? No, Squeak, I'm not. In fact, I'm done fighting. I'm actually done. I don't want to be captain anymore. In fact, I, I've never really wanted to be captain in the first place. I was more or less forced into this job. I was happy as an administrator bot. And I'll be just as happy to be one again. Because being the administrator won't stop me from being able to carry out my mission to get our cargo back to company space. Which should be our main priority in the first place right now. But if you guys want to waste time with some pointless election to get yourselves a new captain, then by all means, do it. I'm done. And, and furthermore, I'm happy to be rid of the responsibility. Hey, you know what? That, that felt pretty good. And so does this. I'm actually free. Free of responsibility of, of being your leader. I'm no longer the bot responsible for everyone else's life. I'm just responsible for my life from now on. And boy, I like the sound of that. <sighs> Are you finished, Mon Cap? I mean, Administrator Putsch? Yes? Is that all you've got to say? Well, uh, yeah. Except, whoever wins this election, just be warned. You'll be the least popular bot around. Trust me, I know. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. Well, I'll be. I, I mean, I... I can't believe he took it so well. Me neither. I was sure he put up a fight. Well, I for one couldn't give a rat's... Sphinx? Uh, what? I mean, really. It's all for the best and Putz realizes that. And you know that is all that matters. Now I say, let's party! Party? Yes, you know, like a political party. Oh, for the love of... A Sphinx, old boy. Uh, come with me so I can explain some things to you about the, um, political process. The next few days would pass pretty quickly, and Zimtron and Sphinx were hot on the campaign trail. That would leave Boffin, P2, and me to the job of building a new ship, which would prove to be a lot more difficult than I ever could have imagined. Hmm? That's just Putch now, Boffin. I'm no longer captain. I'm just your administrator. I'm technically still the boss, though. Well, then to use a briscoism, boss dude, I have to inform you that what you are asking for is impossible. I don't know the word impossible, Boffin. It's not in my vocabulary. Oh, uh, well, uh, then, then which word in your vo vocabulary means that there is no possible way to build a new ship out of what remains of the old one? But there has to be a way, Boffin. There just has to be. Remember that whole brain exploding thing? Oh, mine's about to go. I am serious. I'm about to lose it here. Now calm down, boss man. We'll find a way, even if we have to find a whole new ship. Oh, if only we could. What are the odds, Boff? Well, I'm afraid you won't like them. Finding a whole new ship that is capable of hauling our cargo back to company space and which is fueled up... Fully equipped, fully functional, in perfect running condition, with a light speed capable, top of the line engine, and which is ready to take all of us bots on board whenever we're ready to go, is frankly astronomical. Oh, it sure would have been nice though. I'll say it would. Oh, for a ship like that. But let's face it, guys, it just wouldn't happen. 
Our luck just ain't that good. But boy, I sure wish it was. Your wish is my command. Oh, what was that? Did, did you guys hear that? Yes, I, I certainly heard it. It sounded like a strange yet distant voice. It's sure getting dark. It must be going to rain. We'd best get inside somewhere. Don't want to catch rust. Yeah, you're, you're right, P2. Best to be safe rather than sorry. Uh, h- hang on a minute, boss. I, I don't think it's getting cloudy. Uh, I, I, th- I think... Uh, yes. I think something large is blocking out the sun. Well, what do you mean, Buff? What could possibly be big enough to block out the sun? Whoa. Whoa, whoa. What the hell is that? It looks like a huge ship, Chums. Did... Did you hear that, Boffin? Uh, you hear what, Pudge? Hmm? The, the, the ship in the sky above us? No, uh, nothing. Never mind. P2 is right, boss man. It is a huge ship. In fact, it's a cargo vessel. And it looks brand new. But, 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 but how could it be? It looks just like the ship I imagined a moment ago when I... wished for a new ship. Could it... Could it be? I mean, could I really have wished a new ship into existence? Well, keep in mind that Planet Bob is an enchanted planet where where virtually anything can happen. And that we know that there is a strange being known as a wishing well roaming around here somewhere. Well, and that has said that it will grant random wishes. Remember me telling you about that whole business with Trevor and Kika and Dr. Octagus's abandoned laboratory earlier? Sure. Well, I think this could be one of them. Then we're saved. We can finally get off Bob. (laughs) I I can't believe it. I can't believe this. And to think all I had to do was wish it to happen. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Well, what do you know about that? (laughs) It's certainly amazing. Yes, yes it is. But we're going home, guys. We're actually... Going home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Waha. Woohoo! All right, we're saved. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I just can't believe you guys are actually leaving. Hey, Dave, man, relax, dude. It's not the end of the world or anything. It may as well be. I'll be left here all alone again. All by my lonesome. <laughs> dude, you seriously need some professional help. Ever consider seeing a shrink? I don't really want to be any shorter, you know, Zipper. No, man. I mean a psychiatrist. What's that? Just, you know, a person you can, you know, talk to, man. You know, about your problems. They, They have people like that? Oh, sure, man. Elsewhere, not here, but somewhere, you know? And I'm stuck here without even a shred. <laughs> Dude, you seriously need a drink. I can't even do that! <laughs> well, that's it. We've packed up the last of the drinks... Peanuts, bar stools, and those little umbrellas. Oh, the banana club is empty. Don't remind me. <laughs> oh, what's his problem, Zip? Oh, he's pretty depressed, Trav man. Oh, but why? Oh, this is all so exciting. We're leaving this planet at last. Hooray! I know you are. <laughs> Yes, and it's so wonderful! Yeah, try.
five man for us yeah it is for mr trunks here it ain't dude no no man oh i see <laughs> No, Trev. The last time I checked, trees couldn't even live in space. No air. It's a vacuum. Trees freeze, wilt, and, um, let me think. Die! <laughs> True. Well, um, 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 oh, I know. If only you were a bot, then you could come with us. Oh, great plan, Trev. Yeah, a tree becomes a bot. Easy. Well, now you come to mention it. Hmm. Well, let me just try this, eh? Try what? Afraid you've lost me as well, Trev, man. Shh, just a moment. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish Dave was no longer a tree, but instead a bot. Nothing. Oh, how disappointing. I mean, it works for former Captain Putch. I just figured it worked for me. Strange. I'm sorry, Dave. Oh, it's all right, Trev. You tried, right? I mean, it's no big deal. I've been alone before. I'm a mature tree. I can handle it. Heck, probably won't even live that much longer. I mean, we trees only live about, oh, two, three hundred years. Which means I'll only be sitting here in this forest all alone for another, oh, let me think, about another 150 years. Oh, Dave. Oh, I wonder why my wish didn't work. I mean, I was sure I worded it just right. Oh, let me try again. I wish... For Dave the tree to become Dave the bot. That's it. Ha ha, your wish is my command. Hey, 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 I'm no longer a tree. I I'm a bot. I'm a freaking bot. Ha 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 ha. Oh, it worked. Oh, I knew it would. Trippy, man. Cool. Yeah, cool, but somehow I thought I'd be taller. Yup, a stay on Planet Bob was coming to an end. But there was some unfinished business to attend to. Zimtron and Sphinx had a debate in the Banana Club before it was completely dismantled. My fellow Roboticans, lend me your sound receptors. Welcome to our political debate, which will take the form of an episode of Butt War. Are you ready, mon ami? Anytime you are, Bob. Then, let the bat war begin. Oh, 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 that one just missed. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, that was close. Oh, ah, ow. Oh, 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 you got me. I'm hit. Me too. I think I'm a goner. So, who wins? I think we will cause this one a draw, mon ami but I will likely have the popular vote after that cheap shot in round three. Cheap shot? How have you know I played the game fair and square? Then I decided to take one of our new shuttlecraft for a spin around Planet Bob, just to have one last look at this marvelous world before we departed from it forever, and so I could say goodbye properly. Yup, I saw some amazing things. The rainbow ice canyons, the purple oceans, the mall, and some of the most incredible double sunsets you will ever imagine. I even stopped in to see Chef at his Italian-French bistro on the opposite side of the planet. Oh, Captain Pudge. A former Captain Pudge? I'm actually just an administrator again. Well, congratulations on your demotion. Have an oil steak on the house. <laughs> you know how much I love your cooking, Chef. Thank you. Yeah, it was quite an experience, saying goodbye to Planet Bob. I 
found that it wasn't so easy as I had imagined to leave, but the time had come to depart. And so we boarded the new ship, which we christened the SS Titan II. Remembering what had happened the last time we tried to leave Planet Bob, you know, the whole nastiness with the Titan One crashing and all, because Bob didn't want to be alone, we decided it was best to ask Bob for his permission to leave this time. And considering Dr. Octagus, the insane talking Santa Country, and Briscoe were probably out there somewhere, and that the chef was staying behind the runner's bistro, Bob was kind enough to allow us to leave this time, with our ship intact. Oh, oh, and before I forget, there was one last piece of business to be conducted before we set off on our journey back towards company space. Zimtron and Sphinx ridiculous election. I mean, after all, we needed an actual captain for this new ship, and I didn't want any part of it. So, the crew voted. But this election didn't exactly turn out as anyone had imagined. Well, let me clarify. It only turned out the way... One person imagined it. Remember Trevor had dropped three coins in that wishing well? So there was one random wish to be granted. Well, the votes are in, crew. You've cast your ballots and decided who you want as your next captain. The first captain of the Titan, too. Uh, will you just get on with it already? Yes. We've waited long enough to find out that I am to be the new captain. In your dreams, fat boy. You better believe it, Spikey. Oh, yeah? Well? Boys, boys! You've debated and campaigned enough this past week. The election is over. We've boarded the Titan II and are ready to depart. But we can't do that until we have a new captain give the order to take us out. Do you want me to read the results of this election or not? We, oui, we do. Please! All right, then. The winner by... Wow! By a landslide. And I mean a landslide. It's unanimous. This bot got all the votes. See? I told you so, Zimtron. They love me. They really love me. Nonsense! And the new captain of the Titan II is... James. Well, who? What? But... But... That's simply not... Possible. I mean, I voted for myself, or, or at least I meant to. Come to think of it, I, I do seem to uh, recall writing the name James. That's just weird. These are all write-in votes, and the name written in is James. James? Who the hell is James? I, I don't know. Will... Will James please step forward? You mean... I'm the new captain? Me? Is your name James? Oh, actually... Yes. Then... It's you! How? I mean, uh, okay, I accept. I... I... Mad. I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> yup, you guessed it. I was the one laughing. Why? Because I was the one who made the last wish. <laughs> and it had been my last official duty as captain to give the computer a name. He asked me to choose one for him some weeks before, and James is the name I'd chosen. He was tired of being called computer, considering he was no longer just an apparatus plugged into the wall. And then, it was me who made that last wish. I did it for my own amusement, yes, but really I did it for my crew. I knew they needed someone intelligent, level-headed, and capable. Despite the constant bad mood, those adjectives certainly describe the compu- <laughs> I mean, James. He was the right choice to lead the crew forward. And in the days and weeks ahead, you'll see just what I mean by that. What? You want all the answers right now? Listen. All will be revealed, <laughs> to coin a phrase. Stay tuned! <laughs> oh, yeah, I like the administrator's couch. <laughs> it's nice. <sighs>
You have been listening to episode 502 of Robots of the Company, Random Wishes, which was written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and which starred, in order of appearance, Joe Thomas as Putch, Jim Barber as Sphinx, Jeff Niles as Zimtron, Sally Wiggett as Squeak, Shane Harris as Boffin, Dave Weaver as P2, Jonathan Patrick Russell as The Wishing Well, Captain John Tatterzak as Payload, Wayne Hayward as Dave the Tree, a.k.a. Dave the Bot, uh, David Alt as Zipper and Trevor, Jonathan Patrick Russell as Chef, and Steve Anderson as the Computer, a.k.a. Captain James. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod. The associate producer and post-production editor was Jeff Niles. The co-producer was Vince Staden. The sound designer, script editor, producer, and director was none other than Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series Robots of the Company was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. That is all. Now back to your regularly scheduled credits. Take it away, me. And if you'd like to email us with any of your comments or questions, you may do so at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. Will we dare right back? It's a mystery. Random wishing was going down during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as things get a little bit exciting and dangerous for the robots of the company in a little episode we like to call The Enforcer. It's coming up soon, I promise. Until then, this is the creditor, as always, asking you to please stay tuned. This has been a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2009. All rights reserved. If you produce audio dramas, it obviously isn't to become rich and famous. You love the medium, and you want to share your passion for theater of the mind. The Mutual Audio Drama Network is looking for you. Mutual presents audio dramas every day of the week, each with its own genre. Mystery, sci-fi, comedy, horror, all reaches of the imagination. It doesn't matter if you produced your shows years ago or are still cranking them out. Share them on the world's largest collection of modern audio drama and audio fiction. Give a listen at MutualAudioNetwork.com. And if you'd like to be a part of the excitement, with free access to all sorts of voices, sound effects, music, and more, just drop a line to mutualaudio at gmail.com. The Mutual Audio Drama Network. Why not join us today?